Hey guys. Well, here we are. Completely fully in the holiday season. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and you have recovered from all the um, extra food and extra family time. I know for some of us, sometimes that can be a little stressful. Uh, but yeah, so because we are into the holidays, we not only have extra things on our to-do list and extra events on our calendars, but we also have extra pop culture-y type things going on. So there are new movies, there are new shows, there are shows ending, there are lots of things coming out just in time for the holidays. So I thought I would weigh in with a few thumbs up and thumbs down from the things that I have seen and read and heard. Um, and I would love to hear from you too. So please weigh in in the, in the comments and let us know uh, what you think about the things that I'm talking about and anything extra that um, that you may have seen over the last couple of weeks. Um, okay, I had to write a list. There's so much. Uh, first of all, you might be able to tell that I'm in my car, and uh, but I'm parked. So no worries about me uh, driving and Facebooking. <laughs> I am parked in my garage, but I knew if I went inside, I would not get this video made because I would get distracted by laundry and computer and work and cats and other things. So we are in my garage. All right, first up, my first thumbs up is one of the most fun uh, and that is Thor Ragnarok. My husband Mark and I went to see this in the theater. Not the first weekend it came out, but the week after. So that meant for a full week, I was hearing and reading reviews about how amazing this movie was. And I tried to keep my expectations in check because um, I love superhero movies. I love a lot of the Marvel movies in particular. But the Thor movies have not really been my favorite. Uh, I watched the first one and thought it was kind of boring. And then I don't even think I've seen the whole second Thor movie. So I was trying to uh, keep my expectations in check. But when you're hearing people say that it is the best movie they've ever seen, the best superhero movie, the best Marvel movie, all these things, it's kind of hard to do that. So we went to the movie. And it was great. It was a lot of fun. Now, a friend of mine, Dawn, uh, said that she, and she is, Dawn is a movie connoisseur. She sees all the movies. So I totally trust her opinion. And she told me that she thought Thor Ragnarok was funnier than Guardians of the Galaxy. I love you, Dawn. But I don't think that it was quite that funny. It was funny, don't get me wrong. But I, I guess... When it comes down to it, I'm I'm more a fan of Chris Pratt than Chris Hemsworth, which feels strange, but it's true. So I definitely give Thor a thumbs up. It was very funny. The plot was easy to follow, even if you haven't watched the first two Thor movies. Um, the characters, like the female characters were strong. Thor gets his hair cut, which is always a plus in my book because I'm not a fan of long, stringy hair, even on top of Chris Hemsworth's head. Chris Hemsworth's head. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was great. And the use of music uh, was fantastic. It was it was really, really well done. I'm not sure that it lived up to the expectations I had uh, accidentally built up um, based on all the over-the-top reviews I heard and read, but it was really good. So if you haven't seen this one and you like superhero movies, I would definitely go see Thor. Um... Okay, so the next, I've seen a lot of movies in the theater uh, recently, which is not normal. And actually, there, Mark and I try to do like a date night once a month. It's usually about every other month because schedules, babysitting, money, whatever. And we always like to go see movies. And sometimes we get so irritated because there's nothing good in the theater that we want to see. That is not the case right now. Right now, it's like, I want to see 14 different movies, and I don't have a 14-movie budget or schedule. So, anyway, the next movie uh, that I saw in the theater over the last couple weeks is Wonder. And I took Anna Lynn, my 10-year-old, to see Wonder. Um, 
It is based on a book, a kid's book, and it is about a little boy who has um, a lot of health problems and the result is a lot of uh, facial deformities. He's been homeschooled up until I think it's sixth grade and his family decides that he needs to go to public school. And it's all about how he uh, adjusts to that and how his family adjusts. It's told from different points of view and it is phenomenal. So my daughter had read this book. She read it last year and she read it this year. She, I think she actually in total has read the book three times. Now I will let you know, great mom moment. She asked me to read it and I didn't do it. I knew it was going to be one of those sad, sick kid move books. And I was like, ah, that's not my favorite thing. So I'm just not going to do it. And oh, it's due at the library. We've got to take it back. So that was bad of me. Um, so I didn't read the book, but we went and saw the movie. Guys, I am telling you what. So I cried for two hours straight, like tears streaming down my face. I joked with my daughter that she is like stone cold Austin because she didn't cry. But she's like, Mom, I already knew what was going to happen. I cried when I read the book three times. So had I done my homework and been a good mom and read the book my daughter asked me to read, I might not have uh, cried through the movie. But I don't know. It is well written. It is well acted. It stars Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson as the parents. Um, mm -hmm. It is just, it's so good. It is so, so good. If you have kids that are like, I don't know, eight and older, I would say take them to see this movie. Have them read this book. It is so good. It's all about accepting kids who are different, um, being a good friend. There's a whole storyline about how the older sister is kind of overlooked because of her little brother. And of course, again, awesome mom moment. I was like, hey, Anna Lynn, you know when you talk about how we love your little baby sister more than you? And I'm like, no, that's ridiculous. It could be way worse. <laughs> um, but yeah, I cannot say enough good things about this movie. It was so, so good. Two, two thumbs up. Like, I won't even get one thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Go see Wonder. Okay. And the third movie, now this is going to come with, this is a thumbs down and a thumbs up, which I'm sure if you have read anything about pop culture in the last week, you have heard this. So um, after Thanksgiving, my girls and I went to my grandma's house, okay, for lunch with my mom and dad and brother. Um, my husband works nights, so he was, and we've all been sharing a cold, so he was at home in bed. <laughs> um, but So after lunch... The girls and I went to see Coco. Now, I will say I was a little unsure about this movie because I'd seen the preview. And while the storyline looked great, it's about a little boy in Mexico who wants to be a musician. But his whole family hates music. And instead, they want him to join the family business of making and repairing shoes. Um, but it a lot of it is in the um, spirit world. And so the characters in the spirit world are all skeletons. And I just wasn't sure. My 10-year-old is um, kind of sensitive and gets scared by stuff easily. My three-year-old is not, but she's three. So I was like, ah, are these skeletons going to be scary? Is it too intense? I wasn't sure. But then we really wanted to go see a movie. And My Little Pony wasn't showing anymore. Darn it. <laughs> so we went and saw it anyway. And it was really good. I'll get to that in a minute. The part that is a thumbs down. Um, so to give you a little context for my family seeing this movie, uh, my three-year-old, the week before Thanksgiving, we decided as a family, what would make the holiday season a little more stressful? Let's take away nap time. Yeah, thumbs down for that. Um, but she wasn't sleeping, like, wasn't going to bed well at night. Um, blah, blah, blah. We decided no more naps. As hard as that is, naps aren't working. So we are still adjusting to no naps. So that's where we were on at this time. Like, we're going to the movie theater at the time where she would normally be taking a nap or had or would have taken a nap. She's a little bit cranky which makes me really cranky. And also the fact that my husband wasn't able to be with us I was really bummed about that. So we go to the movie theater and I'm basically like threatening them to leave the whole time we're walking up to buy our tickets, which costs more than I expected. Cause I thought it was an early movie. It was actually past the deadline of when the tickets are cheap, whatever. Anyway, so we get the tickets. We go in and sit down. They start showing the previews 
And that's fine. I keep telling my three-year-old, hey, Adrian, these are commercials, okay? It'll be okay. Coco's going to come up next. It'll be fine. Well, then, because it's a Pixar movie, we have a short, a little tiny short movie beforehand. Now, normally, the shorts are super funny. Like, um, that crazy Ice Age squirrel that chases the acorn all around the galaxy, um, it's really stupid, but it cracks me up every time. And my kids like it. They think it's super funny. I think that's a Pixar short. Well, anyway, that's not what we got this time. What we got instead was a very long, not super interesting Frozen short from Disney, Olaf's Frozen Adventure. Now, I have two little girls. We love ourselves some Frozen at my house, especially the three-year-olds. She's still full on all in for Anna and Elsa and Olaf and all the characters. She loves them all, even the bad guys. But I'm telling you, my kid was crying, like full on crying. Now, Five minutes before, during the preview, she'd also been crying because she needed medicine on her thumb that did not actually have an injury. But still, we're there to watch Coco, and we are in this 21-minute Olaf's Frozen Adventure short, and she is sobbing. I just want to watch Coco! So I thought it was just us, because that's a pretty extreme reaction to something I would have thought she liked. But as it turns out, nobody likes this Frozen short. Nobody likes it. Um, you read any article, any review of Coco, they're going to talk about this Frozen short being ridiculous. Um, I've seen like a whole collection of tweets about it. Um, we all felt trapped and tortured. <laughs> so thumbs down to the Frozen short being surprisingly not great. But big thumbs up to Coco. So I loved this cartoon movie. Loved it a lot. It is, um, it is colorful. It is warm and inviting. The, the illustration is amazing. It is so beautiful. So when they go to the um, spirit world, and I apologize. I'm not sure that they call it the spirit world. They might call it something else. But Annalyn is reading Percy Jackson right now. So all I can think is underworld. And I don't think that's right either. Anyway, when they go down below to where the dead people are, <laughs> um, well, I shouldn't say down below. Maybe it's up above. Whatever. They cross the bridge to where the dead people are. The spirit world is what I'm going to call it. It is so beautiful. It reminds me of um, Inside Out when they show the complex world, the whole world that's in your, your brain. But times 10. It is, uh, it's beautiful. The illustration is just outstanding and um the music is super fun and it's all about how your family is important so it's actually um so a lot of movies even kids movies even my beloved hallmark movies they go a little too heavy for me on the whole follow your dream seize the moment because that's not always like wise or good um, I mean, it's good, but not always. Anyway, uh, so actually, when they talk about seize the moment, it turns out that that's not necessarily the best choice. Because it turns out the uh, villain in this movie sees the moment at the exclusion of his family and friends. And he hurt other people to get ahead. So they kind of temper that with reality, which I appreciated. But then the ma whole main thing is how your family is important. And then they also, I mean... Spoiler alert, parents. Um, he still gets to be a musician. And he sings a couple songs, and he is so good. It is it is just delightful. I loved it. And it was really fun that it's all about a different culture. And so um, I got to talk to my 10-year-old about that. And she wanted to know kind of uh, like about their belief system. Because she's like, this is different than like going to heaven and Jesus. And um, so we talked about that. And... I just thought it was great. I thought it was really, really good. So thumbs, sad thumbs down to the Frozen short, but big thumbs up to, to the movie Coco. I thought it was great. If you have kids, they'll probably love it. Unless they're scared of skeletons, and then maybe not. Um, my three-year-old that I was worried about, her only sadness was that one of the skeletons got sick. And she was worried about that. But then I told her, no, it's okay. He, was, he got better. And she was fine. 
So it was good. Um, so yeah, so we've talked about Thor. We've talked about Wonder. We've talked about Coco. Um, so I've got a, two more things, and they are TV related. Um, one is a thumbs down. So a while ago, I shared with you guys, maybe not on this page. It might have been in our group over on the couch. Uh, which, by the way, if you are not a member of that group, it is a super fun place. We talk about this stuff all the time. We talk about all the pop culture goodness that you can handle. And it is a safe, judgment-free zone um, to do so. Um, and I will put a link down below if you want to um, join that group. We would love to have you. Anyway, over there, I shared a link to a preview of a new show on Hulu called Future Man. It stars... Ja, I'm forgetting his name, Josh Hutcherson. Anyway, he plays PETA in The Hunger Games. And also Eliza Coop from Happy Endings. And also Benched. And also those last weird seasons of Scrubs. Whatever. She is a funny, funny lady. I like her a lot. Um, and so this TV show is about um, time travel. It's like a sci-fi video game type spoof where this kid is, of course, the only one who can save the world. Um it looked really funny, and I thought, this is going to be great. Totally up my alley. Well, I watched most of the first episode when it came out uh, a couple weeks ago. I can't remember the exact date. <sighs> no judgment if you like it, honestly. But for me, it was too rated R. Um I don't mind language. I mean, I for better or for worse, it doesn't really bother me. But this was not just profanity. It was vulgar, gross jokes. Um, there's a whole scene of the main character. Um, eh, what's the word I want to say on video? Um, getting it on with himself? Um, and it like... It's not an illusion. It is like a scene of him doing it. And I don't need that. I don't need that on my TV or in my life or... Ugh, ugh, no, thank you. Um, and so if it would have been just one of these things, um, I might have kept watching. And actually, I read a review that says it gets less gross and childish. Well, not childish, but like a sophomoric. Um, but less that and more actual funny and interesting as the episodes go on like past the first couple episodes but I, there's a lot of tv out there guys and well as you might know i have a whole lot of uh christmas tv movies to watch so i decided this is a thumbs down for me i am not gonna watch it um so if you are if you don't care for movies that are rated r or tv shows that are rated ma um thumbs down skip this one do not think that I'm recommending it. If that stuff doesn't bother you, like I said, no judgment. Because I know we all have our own triggers. We all have stuff that we can handle and stuff that we can't. If that stuff doesn't bother you, it's gotten really good reviews. So you might be okay with it. Um, for me, thumbs down, hard pass. All right, last one. A thumbs up from me is the Mindy Project finale. So... The Mindy Project was originally on Fox, and then two years ago, um, Fox canceled it, and they moved it over to Hulu. And I don't know that I want to say, oh, when it went to Hulu, it jumped the shark. Uh, I don't I don't know about that, but it really wasn't as good. I wouldn't say that it was necessarily that move that made it that way. I would say it's when Danny decided, like, they made him a total jerk. Now, I didn't think it was a case of character assassination or unrealistic writing or acting. Um, I actually thought it was pretty realistic that sometimes the things that attract you to a person end up being the things that are really difficult to deal with when you are in a long-term committed relationship. Um, <laughs> hashtag marriage is hard. <laughs> um, and I think that it wasn't out of character for him. I For him to be like, no, I want you to have babies and stay home. Because he was kind of like that the whole time. Um, so anyway, but it was hard to watch. And then it just wasn't all that great this last season. But I really liked the way they decided, okay, from the beginning of the season, that this was the final season. So they were able to wrap up all the storylines. 
because it is not realistic, but I really like my endings to be all wrapped up and happy. <laughs> I mean, if I wanted things like unhappy and unresolved, I would just not escape into TV, right? So they wrap up all the storylines. Um, I won't spoil it for you if you haven't watched it, but the ending is a happy one for everyone. I really liked what they did. And there was a, um, not a flash mob, like a, a singing, dancing scene, which is so silly. And I know that some people hate that, but I love it. Um, Heart of Dixie finale excluded because that was weird and dumb in my humble opinion. But in the Mindy Project finale, I loved it. I loved every part of it. I thought that um, I was good. And I was really, I was just really happy that the show that I had originally loved and then loved less as it went on ended in such a great way. So if you um, stopped watching the Mindy Project a while back, I would say maybe give it another try to finish it up so that you can get to the finale and feel kind of a full circle. Um, they did a lot of full circle things. So some of the things like um, kind of echoed or mirrored things from the first episode. I like I like that too. Symmetry is fun. Callbacks are fun. Um, so yeah, thumbs up for me on that. Whew. See, there's so much going on with TV and movies. And I didn't even talk about music and books, guys. There's so much going on. So that is what I have to share with you today. A um, little tiny shout out to my lipstick. My friend Becky is watching this video and she uh, has been selling lip scents for a while. And I keep telling her, uh, I really want to buy that, but I can't pick a color or it's so expensive. Um, but I gave in. She helped me pick a color and I'm liking it so far. Um, perhaps a full review to come. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's what I have for you. I hope you guys are having a great holiday season. Uh, maybe next time I do this video, I'll go in my house and you can see my Christmas decorations. Couldn't do it today because I only have a, um, partially decorated tree up <laughs> and four red Rubbermaid bins in the middle of my living room floor because we haven't gotten it all done yet. So I hope that you are having a fun holiday season so far that you are watching only the most thumbs up of movies and shows. And I will talk to you soon. And if you're watching this later, please tell us in the comments, what are your thumbs up and thumbs down? I would love to hear about it. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.